Hi all, I have another very interesting game to show you today, Leela against Stockfish. This is in round 86. So in this game we see actually after d4, f5, the Dutch defence. So Leela playing with the white pieces here, Stockfish forced to play the Dutch defence. And we go into the Leningrad Dutch, which is actually one of my favourites with black. If, I, if you want an attacking opening, this is a very interesting variation of the Dutch defence to explore where black fianchettos with high priority that bishop and tries usually to keep the pawn structure flexible. So unlike the Dutch stone wall, you don't normally have to have pawns on d5 and c6 here. Sometimes you can just try it for d6 and quite often uh, after castling, the plan of going for e5 and e4 later is quite common. Uh, so here we see castling c4, d6 knight c3 and in fact here there's a very very trendy move knight c6 which I have also played myself with some success with the black pieces. So it's quite provocative provoking d5. Leela does play that knight e5 and black accepts double pawns. This is really a very interesting position from a structural, a structural perspective. Uh, as black I would be concerned mostly about this main line type move queen b3. So it strikes at this diagonal. Structurally white might be interested later in playing for c5 and with preparation d6 would break up the black pawn chain quite often as well as liberating this bishop. So this is quite dangerous this whole queen b3 in conjunction with c5 generally speaking. We see rook b8 and in fact uh, rook d1 so strengthening the position rather than c5 there bishop d7 and now a4 is played this is quite interesting uh, in the game c uh, there is a stem game with c5 and then this didn't work out too well in <laughs> says Berigny against Radix uh, and Radix was actually a low rated uh, player he actually got uh, a very strong attack after king h8 just to quickly show uh, that game it's a very interesting example where black really uh, went to town tactically against the white king uh, so we have this challenging the finch of bishop the f file pressure uh, an interesting offer of a, a peace sack there and in fact bishop takes f3 so black really did play like uh, a kind of caveman style uh, attack e4 check yeah wonderful stuff there's a wonderful game this this game and uh, white just got hacked and white was actually you know higher rated as well so quite impressive 2395 versus a 2097 that was with an immediate c5 i'm not saying that's that's going to happen definitely but uh, leader's move is interesting to consider a4 just keeping c5 at, at the moment uh, just holding on to it black actually played c5 okay so why did stockfish play c5 here if we look at king h8 perhaps Lila could play a5 and maybe there's a queenside form pawn <laughs> coming up. B6, queen a3, knight e8. For example, here white should have a nice edge. Uh, so c5 from Stockfish. D takes c6. B takes c6. So discovering an attack against the queen. Queen a3. Queen c7. So interesting uh, tactics here. It looks a little bit dangerous uh, to take on e7 in circumstances here. In fact, Leela, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of counterplay uh, potentially. So Leela actually played b4 here though, e4, bishop f4, provoking e5. Otherwise, it's skewering, of course, the queen and rook are being skewered at the moment. So e5, the bishop just drops back. Bishop e6, so it looks as though c4 is an issue. Bishop c5, and now rook fd8. The thing is about bishop takes c4, it's not really about bishop takes f8, which uh, discourages bishop takes c4. It seems to be more about bishop d6 here. So, for example, with b5, and uh, white's better there. Uh, if white went for the exchange, this backfires a little bit. This looks like a fantastic position for black, for example, like this. The dark squares are really quite vulnerable here. Black has that bishop without the counterpart, in any case, being celebrated. So uh, rook fd8, we see b5 now. 
rook b c8 on bishop takes c4 here uh bishop d6 and taking and then queen e7 should be quite nice for white big advantage so rook b c8 we have an exchange with a pair of rooks and taking this pawn out queen a5 bishop c5 bishop takes c4 bishop b4 queen a7 b takes c6 so white has emerged with an outside past pawn here structurally uh, so is this something to kind of celebrate using tactics to celebrate this outside pass pawn potentially we see this move rook d1 which seems very logical striking in that file and then we have h5 which gives the king h7 if needed uh e3 so put the brakes uh put the brakes on uh e3 from black king h7 h3 again this looks like prophylaxis type moves uh stopping the use of g4 rook c8 and now we have knight b5 hitting the queen and inviting an exchange of queens off the bishop takes b5 but stockfish not interested queen a6 is played on bishop takes b5 let's have a quick look the exchange of queens this position uh, is going to be nice for white you can see the outside pass pawn is is the trump card here giving white an advantage so queen a6 rook c1 so it looks as though this pin is actually really quite interesting that's protected by the queen at the moment we have knight d5 now knight d6 uh so this is tactically uh, tactically very interesting knight takes b4 is played knight takes c8 uh so in fact leader is going uh giving up it seems after this two pieces for a rook black has uh three minor pieces against white's two but the outside past pawn is very interesting so queen a2 uh basically forcing bishop takes a2 uh there's nothing much else here and we have this interesting imbalance so is the judgment right that this past pawn is is that good because it seems also at this moment the bishop's kind of hemmed in by the by these pawns uh we see bishop d5 rook d8 bishop c6 a5 and now f4 this looks a little bit on the desperate side in this position it does seem as though black's position is creaking if bishop f6 then rook d6 forks the two bishops uh so it's actually very difficult to see a good move for black here instead of f4 if knight c5 then rook c8 and then again uh this is dangerous a6 uh, this is the most decisive way you know if black has to play knight d4 then that's not that's not very good so a7 is coming up uh, so this is just uh, very strong indeed just queening the pawn and stopping black queening uh, so it's very difficult to suggest bishop b5 is another example rook d6 driving the pawn forward potentially so a6 and then uh, it's going to be driving the pawn eventually uh, this kind of situation is also favorable when the rook is really uh, helping that pawn to win material so f4 played immediately and it does allow now a little combination yeah f4 weakens e4 and in fact leader plays a little combination here to reach a favorable end game can you spot it what white plays simplifying if i give you five seconds to pause the video here white's play okay rook takes d3 so getting two pieces for the rook back and it's still the outside pass pawn is the lingering issue uh bishop f8 is played on d2 uh then bishop a4 is good stopping that pawn so uh bishop f8 g takes and, and lila you know takes the opportunity to win a pawn if um well <laughs> uh, otherwise uh a6 looks uh, almost well on a6 takes takes it, it's still very dangerous so bishop f8 uh, so this pawn is taken bishop c5 king f1 king h6 f3 g5 is played on king g7 then bishop e4 d2 king e2 this position white's getting a big advantage uh, so uh, let's see so f3 g5 was played 
and we have f5 so keeping the pawns intact not taking on g5 that would invite the black king in to be quite aggressive so a very important move here if f takes g5 the king's pretty aggressive and probably this is even now opposite color bishops black should have enough but with f5 black is still on the back foot d2 king e2 king g7 bishop e4 king f6 a6 bishop e3 bishop c2 and in fact so much on the black back foot that uh, it was auto resigned both engines fought white was now plus 10 the game ended here as an example continuation well say bishop f4 a7 queens so black is losing another pawn here say black gives up d1 uh, to reach this position white does actually make progress here in this scenario drives the king up there and eventually this will be just unstoppable the pawns will be unstoppable after bishop g6 taking out h5 uh, and then the king can come and arrange a7 with the bishop clinging on to both pawns so that'll be a way of winning this as an example so i'll take you back to the game end position uh, so another interesting uh, struggle where it seems the outside pass pawn potential looked to be underestimated a bit by stockfish uh, so Leela really had that in mind as early as a4 you know it started to generate some interesting uh, possibilities with the outside pass pawn so perhaps that's a good innovation over the immediate c5 to play a4 i hope you enjoyed this game if you did uh, cl please click on the top left box which should appear shortly to become a member at chessbowl.net play against other youtubers you can also test yourself on the variations covered in this and other games from the improved menu at chessbowl the puzzle books option which has a link to the annotated game comments questions donations see the description like share subscribe with the notification bell really appreciate it thanks very much Puzzle book addendum. Let's have a look at a few virtual puzzles from that game. So white's play for a clear advantage here. In this variation, bishop d6, I believe. d6 is vulnerable. And I think b5. No. Maybe moving the pawn. Okay, just moving the pawn there. Let's have a look at another. White's play for a clear advantage here. Again, I think bishop d6 is tempting to take on b8 maybe rook b1 here it feels okay nope oh queen e7 all right that's an interesting invasion hit c5 okay let's go on to another i think here we play this and this end game's just nice Perhaps uh, bishop f1 here, protecting the pawn. Here, uh, this was a desperate variation with knight b2. I think here, white's just the exchange up. There's no problem. And one last one. Uh, here, the weakness is the, the two loose pieces. We can attack both bishops. Okay, uh, if you want to check that out, that's on the improved menu uh, at Chessmold Puzzle Books. Also, uh, check out uh um pull me check out uh the famous players section so we've got steinitz paul morphy tal Sparoff, carlson kramnik fisher so great players to so check out there okay thanks very much